Okay, so 1.6, exploring transformations. Okay, so we look at parent functions. And remember, parent functions are uh, functions in their very basic form. Okay, so like y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals the square root of x, and y equals uh, the absolute value of x, and then the last one was the f and x, or y equals 1 over x. Okay, so those were the parent functions. So now we're looking at transformation of those parent functions. And the transformations are part of the family. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So f and x equals x squared. Okay, so we have a quadratic. The one thing I don't like that you guys learned last year with regards to quadratics is that they use different letters than we're going to use this year. Okay, so when we transform the x squared, we have the letters a, x minus d squared plus c. Okay, so we'll go through the letters again. By last year, this was h and k. Okay, so I don't know why. And then the grade 11, they change all the letters. Now that becomes d and c. Okay, we're going to go through what each one is again in a minute. Then we have f and x equals the square root of x. We transform it. It is a square root of x minus d plus c. f and x equals 1 over x. I'm just writing all the transformations and then I'll explain them in a minute. And the last one we learned was the absolute value. Okay, so what I just did was add an A, D, and C to all the equations. So A, D, and C to all the equations. The A, D, and Cs are the different transformations and translations that could happen for each of the functions. Okay, and all these are on page uh, 50 as well. On page 50, it shows you all the different ones. Okay, I'll just give you guys a minute to get that down.
Okay, we're gonna talk about the transformations in a minute. Okay, so you'll notice that the A value is always in front of the function, okay? So it's separated from X, not always, but in this case it is. Okay, we will be learning a new letter uh, tomorrow, which is our K value. Okay, so notice the A is, uh, I guess, outside of the brackets. Please do notice that D is always in the brackets or within the function. It's always, um, so to distinguish between D and C, if there is a D value, it'll be um, in the brackets. So here, here, under the square root, okay, or in the denominator this way. The C value is always separate at the end, okay? The C is separate, it's outside of the brackets. Make sure here, your C value is not under the square root sign. Your C value is separate, okay? Same here, it's not in the fraction and it's not within the absolute value. Okay, so please make sure that you can distinguish. If it's under the square root, it's a D. If it's outside, it's a C. So then I did a, a general formula here. Okay, so the F here, so it's just A, is your, we'll talk about it. This F means any function. Any function. So we have any function, and then the dx minus d, so d is inside of the bracket, and the c is outside of any bracket. Okay, so now let's talk about, does anyone not copy this out yet? Anyone need another minute? If you need more time, type in yes. Okay, I'll give you another minute. Okay, just gonna erase it out. Okay, so let's talk about what each one of them does. Okay, so we have our A value. Does anyone remember what the A value does? It does two things. And if you want to talk about a quadratic, then you can, because that's when you learned it. What does the A value do? Or what does it tell you about the graph? It's 
skinnier wide or up and down. Okay, skinnier wide like that, skinnier wide. That stretch or compress. Okay, so it tells you vertical stretch or compress, right? Okay, so it tells us if there's a vertical stretch or compression. Okay, um, I'll just expand on that and then talk about your next part there. How do we know if it's a stretch or compress? How do we know if it's a stretch or a compression? we tell by looking at the a value if it will be a stretch or compression does it depend on the like if it's a positive or negative uh, that's the second part so the positive or negative is something else okay um, but good guess so we have here um, fractions and whole numbers okay just be careful a fraction makes it wider so compression uh, you're on the right track, but you just got to be very careful with that. It's kind of mostly correct, the fractions and whole numbers. But if I had a 4 over 3, which is 1.33, that not necessarily means it's one or the other. A fraction makes it wider, so compression, factors. I think you guys are on the right track. Okay, so this got to be a little bit more specific. When you made mean whole numbers... I think I know what you guys are talking about. You're talking about numbers larger than one, okay? So if it's a stretch, if A is larger than one, okay? Just the number itself, doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. The number itself is if it's, lar if it's larger than one. So if it's a negative two or a positive two, okay, it's still a stretch because the number itself is larger than one, okay? And then compression is often fractions, but it's not always true, okay? So let's be a little bit more specific with the numbers. When would it be as compression? Less than one, yes, and less than one and something else. A is less than one and greater than zero. Excellent. Okay, so it has to be between zero and one. Okay, not equal to, because if it's a zero, it does, it's nothing. If it's a one, it doesn't do anything. It's just the same. If it's a one, it's no stretch or compression. Okay, so it has to be between zero and one. So for example, like, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, we can have like a 1 over 3, we can have a 1 over 4, okay? But it's, it, yes, it's fractions usually, okay? But I could have, so I'm going to put examples here. So example would be 2, 4, 5, etc. But you could have a fraction here, you could have say, um, I don't know, 8 over 3. Okay, if you divide this, it would be a 2.33. So it will still be, sorry, 2.66. So that would still be a larger than one. So it will still be a stretch here. Okay, so I usually get that as, a, as an answer. Uh, one's whole numbers, one's fractions. Um, it's mostly true, but it's not exactly true. Okay, because we can have, um, we can have fractions for the stretches. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be whole numbers. It just has to be larger than one. Okay, and these are usually decimals and fractions. Okay, so if it's between zero and one. Okay. All right, the A value does one more thing. It does one more thing. Uh, I just want to erase these examples here. Okay, so it does something else here. 
and it has to do with the positive and the negative. Okay, so this part, the vertical stretch or compression, is strictly just the number itself. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. It's just the actual number itself. But what does the positive and negative tell you? Now you can speak about a quadratic if you like. Okay, so it usually, yeah, that's what you teach in grade 10 if it opens up or down. Okay, so last year you learned uh, if it was a positive A, it opened upwards, and if it was a negative A, it opens downwards, okay? But now we're dealing with multiple fractions, or multiple functions, okay? So we have a square root that doesn't necessarily, it opens sideways, okay? So there is no up or down in that case. Uh, then we also have the reciprocal function, which is uh, hyperbola. Okay, um, so that doesn't really open up or down. Okay, so this was generalized for you last year. So what it actually does, it reflects it. Okay, so it reflects over the x-axis. So if it's positive, nothing happens. So it's a positive, not positive, nothing happens. It's just, it stays the same. stays the same, but if it's negative, it gets reflected over the x-axis. Reflected on the x-axis, reflected over the x-axis, reflected at the x-axis, whatever you want to say, but it's reflected, okay? So it's going up, the quadratic, now it goes down, okay? So if you had like, say, a square root function that looks like this, if we reflect it, if it was negative, it now goes this way, okay? So it gets reflected over the x-axis. But I know last year they generalized it for quadratics and they just said it opens up or opens down. Okay, but what was actually happening, it was being reflected um, over the x-axis. Okay, positive, it just stays the same as the parent function. If it's negative, it's reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so the A value does those two things. It tells us if it's a stretch or compression and then it also tells you if, it go, um, if it's reflected or not. Okay. So positive number, say same, negative, and reflected. Greater than one, it's stretched. Between zero and one, it's compressed. Okay, now our D value. Okay, so this was the same as your H value last year, but now they're generalizing all of them. So now it's, they're all D's and C's. There's no longer H and K. I don't know why they do that in grade 10, and then all of a sudden, grade 11, they change the letters. It just makes it more confusing than it needs to be. Okay, so the D value. What does this occur? And I believe we've done some examples already. So what does the D value do to the function? Yes, it moves it left or right, okay? So it translates. Or shifts. Left or right. So translates or shifts left or right. I 
and remember that it's kind of the opposite, right? So if this was x, say, plus 2, then it goes left two spots. If this said x minus 2, then it would go right two spots. Okay, so just remember about the opposites. So opposite direction. Okay, so again, if it was x plus 2, it would go left. If it's x minus 2, it goes right. Okay, so it's the opposite direction. And then we have our c value. And lastly, what does the C value do? Our C value. Yeah, shifts it up or down. Thank you, guys. Okay, so it translates. translates or shifts up or down. So if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about for today. So the A, D, and C. Tomorrow we're going to introduce the K value. Okay, it's a new letter, and it's um, it's just a horizontal stretch or compress. Okay, instead of vertical, it's it's horizontal. Okay, so this is what this is kind of a review from you guys to grade ten. So what you guys will be doing now uh, is I want you to there's online there's a worksheet. It's actually quite a bit of graphs. So it's um, each function. So we have the square root, oh, sorry, we have the quadratic, we have the square root, then we have the reciprocal, and then we have the absolute value. So what I want you guys to do uh, for the next two, almost two hours is you guys are to complete these graphs. Okay, so these tables, sorry, the graphs and the tables. So you're listing out A values, C values, and D values right in the main and, and range for each of them, okay? I'll post these ones for you afterwards, so I want you guys to try it first. So that's online under 1.6. And then when you're finished, there's three questions from the homework I want you to do. So we're doing the handout. Wait, sir. Yeah. Is the handout just practice? Yeah, I want you guys to be practicing this stuff, right? It's the homework. So it's not actually like we hand that in? No, you're not handing it in, no. It's just the homework. Oh, okay. It's the homework. Okay, so the homework is the handout. And then I want you to do three questions from the homework. Uh, page 51, 1 to 3. Okay, so page 51, 1 to 3. So it's kind of an investigation. It's a pretty easy 